Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. I am Professor Anjali Pal from Civil Engineering Department. I am covering the Environmental Chemistry part. This is my lecture, fourth lecture on acids, bases and salts. Today in my lecture, I will tell you about the indicators. You all know that indicators are very important in titrations and we know that there are many different kinds of indicators depending on the what type of titration I am doing we have to choose the indicator. So, for example, there are acid base indicators which we use for acid base titrations. There are some metal ion indicator which we will use for metal ion determination. So, for example, for hardness determination, there are some redox indicator which we use for redox titrations and there are some adsorption indicators also which we use for other purposes. Now, because we are talking about the acids, bases and salts, now I will tell you about the acid base indicators. We all know about the two indicators, one is the phenophthalene indicator and and uh, another is the methyl orange indicator. We all use even from our school days, we are habituated in using these two indicators for our acid base titrations. How it is happening? How the, why they are changing the, um, the color in during our titration? Uh, when it is acidic, it shows one color, when it is basic, the solution is basic, it is giving another color that I will tell you today. Now, I am starting with the indicator phenophthalene. Before, before uh, knowing this phenophthalene, uh, we must see the structure and uh, we must know the uh, what is tautomer. Okay, tautomer. We know isomer, isomer uh, means to one say two different molecules or maybe one molecule if they have different structures then they are isomers. Now, here uh, it is also tautomers means a special type of isomer, but indicators are uh, weak organic acids. We have already seen that organic acids, acetic acids, formic acids and uh, they are weak that also we have we now know that carboxylic acid group uh, that is the organic acid is weak weak acidic weak acid and um, the phenophthalene I will tell you that tautomers what is the what is the um, what is the characteristic of the tautomers. Okay. Tautomers they can exist they can uh, exist in equilibrium they are the different forms of the same molecule and uh, one form is non ionized form another is the uh, this non ionized form uh, is uh, showing one color and the other is the form which is capable of ionization that is giving another color. Now, uh, if we represent the non ionized form as H i n and the ionizable form as H i n 1, then we can tell that it is the equilibrium between H i n and H i n 1 and H i n 1 immediately dissociates because it is ionizable form. So, it can dissociate into H plus ion and i n 1 minus ion. The, these are the all the characteristics and I am talking about phenophthalene now. The non ionized form H i n differs in color from H i n 1 
ok. So, the color of this one and this one is different and obviously, this color and this color, this is the color which is the color of the ionized form ok. And the indicator ion A. So, so the color of H i n is different from the that of the i n i n 1 minus ok. Now, here comes the structure of phenophthalein ok. This is the structure of phenophthalein. So, tautomer before going to this I must tell you what is tautomer ok. Tautomer I have told you that this is the isomer ok. So, here you can see uh, those who are from chemistry they already know what is this, this is nothing but acetyl acetone ok and uh, it has two ketone groups and the C, C O means C double bond O here, C double bond O here and these two carbonyl, carbonyl, carbonyl group is divided is separated by one C H 2 group and here, here you can see that C double bond O has become C O H and here the double bond is formed here between this carbon and this carbon there is one double bond. That is why it is called in uh, in all. In all means in and all. In means double bond, okay, and all means alcohol, okay. So in this form, there are both this group that is the double bond and also the OH group. That is why it is called in all. And this is the keto. So it is the tautomer. This form is the tautomer of this, okay. And this is the this is called keto in all tautomerism keto enol tautomer a keto form and enol form whatever may be you can call. Here also so what is happening here if we look carefully then we will see that one hydrogen from here is coming here to this oxygen and that is why the double bond is formed. So, here you can see that C instead of CH2 it has become CH and this instead of O it has become OH. So, basically this hydrogen from here it is coming to this oxygen and this is the characteristic of the tautomerism ok. So, one, one atom or one group can change its place ok giving two different forms ok and this is in equilibrium. So, here also it happens same way if you look into this structure you see it is the OH. So, hydrogen is present here but now this hydrogen is coming this bond is broken and this hydrogen has come here ok. So, this this form and this form are the tautomer ok just like this one here it is um, the structure the compound is different that is why it looks different, but basically this is also tautomerism ok. Now, about the color this this one you see uh, 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 chromophoric group means there are some double bond single bond double bond single bond the alternate double bond single bond if it is there we know the color is developed ok. So, here this this type of um, bond is not there that is why here this this is colorless uh, colorless form ok. So, phenophthalein when it is present in this form uh, we see that we see no color that means it is colorless. Now, if you increase the pH that means under alkaline condition you know that this form is generated first this form and then it comes here because hydrogen is uh, taken away by the alkali. So, so this form is generated and this has pink color. So, we we have used phenophthalein if you remember that when we say for example, I take some acid ok acid solution ok. Uh, say for example, uh, uh, HCl solution ok and we put a, uh, a few drops of phenophthalein. So, what will be the color? It will be colorless, we see no color because HCl has no color, phenophthalein also in acidic condition it, it does not give any color ok. Now, if I start adding some NaOH solution there slowly slowly and when the neutralization point will come that means, the pH will be around 7 or may be more than that. Then we will see that the color now has become pink ok. Why it is pink? Because phenophthalein has changed its uh, its structure ok. So, this is the mechanism. So, in acid solution it will have this structure and when you add alkali slowly slowly it will it will be converted into this structure. Same compound, but two different structures and they are nothing but tautomers. So, here it is colorless in acidic condition here it is pink 
in the alkaline condition. This is the so this is an indicator acid base indicator and um, uh, in presence of acids the equilibrium is shifted to the left and the indicator consists mainly of the non ionized form colorless form and in presence of alkali the equilibrium is shifted to the right uh, and the solution gives the color of the indicator ion that is pink color. Now, there is something going on uh, it is very similar to the, the equilibrium of the acetic acid that prevails in water medium it is you will find the similarity. Okay. The color therefore, depends on the H plus ion and the uh, of the solution uh, um, by the relation how k indicator this is the equilibrium constant equilibrium constant because it is uh, you can think that the the h i n is giving to h plus plus i n 1 minus okay i have shown you the uh, equation in the previous slide so if you consider that equation then k indic you think about this equilibrium constant so k indicator this, that is why in is written k is equals to nothing but h plus ion concentration into i n 1 minus that concentration by h i n that undistorted form that is the concentration. Okay. Now, if you change the place then and then you take the log minus log then you will get that p h is equals to p k uh, p k indicator plus log ionized form by non ionized form. It is you will find the similarity with the acetic acid that buffer also na, the buffer buffer solution where k indicator is the ionization constant of the indicator also called indicator constant and uh, p k indicator is nothing but minus log of k indicator. Okay. Now, comes the in acid base indicators when we will see colorless and when we will see the colored form. Uh, because it is the mixture of two forms. So, one color will be predominating when okay, because it is titration. So, you have to know that neutralization point right. So, this is very important to know that the color is visible when one form is about 90 percent and the other form is about 10 percent. It may be 95 percent and 5 percent also, but at least 90 percent it should be unless because say for example, both the forms are present 50 50 then you will not visualize the color. Okay. One form should be in excess how much excess 90 percent another form is very low concentration that is the 10 percent. It is evident therefore, an indicator changes its color over a short, but definite, definite range of pH p k indicator plus minus 1 okay. that log 10 is to 1 not 10 actually 9 is to 1 right 9 is to 1 that is why approximately plus minus 1 I have written. Okay. That means, the choice of indicator means for any any uh, type of titration it is very important to choose the indicator there are so many different kinds of indicator. Okay. You are the person to choose the indicator for a particular particular titration say for example, pH pH each each indicator there are so many indicators methyl orange, methyl red, bromocrisol green, phenolphthalein, litmus, thymol these are very common other than this there are many other many other indicators okay. and each indicator has its characteristic pH range where it changes its color and that is coming from here only. So, 3.1 minus 4.8 3.1 not minus 3.1 to 4.8 this is the range for methyl orange it is the range for methyl red 4.2 to 6.3. Okay. So, there are different ranges where it changes the color for phenolphthalein 8.3 to 10. Okay. Now, the what is the characteristic means which there are if you have more choice then what which indicator you will choose what characteristic should be there for a good indicator a sharp contrast of color in acid and alkali solution. I like phenolphthalein very uh, very much why because you see the contrast means in acid it is colorless okay. in alkali it is pink. So, you will see the color change very drastic color change okay, in the neutralization point, but for methyl orange you know that methyl orange in alkali it is yellow 
and in acid it is pinkish red. So, methyl orange if you use for acid base titration you have to be very careful it needs some trial also you need some experience also to use this indicator because the change uh, from yellow to uh, pinkish uh, red or pinkish red to yellow you know the change is uh, not like phenolphthalein it is not sharp uh, sharp change you will see slowly slowly it is changing the color and you have to be very careful that ok this is the end part sometimes you will be confused also ok. That is why it is told that contrast of color a short but definite pH range for a color change and a rapid automatic change of the indicator on change of pH means the one form to another form it should be very fast otherwise if it takes time the equilibrium you know the should reach very fast. So, that is also another thing for the indicator you know and that characteristic for the indicator. <coughs> now, choice of indicator how you will choose a indicator ok. There are different kinds of titration you may take up. So, for example, for acid base titration you know there are maybe four different types. So, for example, uh, it may be a strong acid versus strong base, it may be strong acid versus weak base, it may be weak acid versus strong base, it may be weak acid versus weak base ok. So, examples are also written strong acid strong base it may be HCl versus NaOH, strong acid uh, versus weak base may be HCl versus ammonium hydroxide, weak acid versus strong base may be acetic acid versus NaOH, okay. weak acid versus weak base it may be acetic acid versus ammonium hydroxide. So, there are so many different kinds okay. then how will you choose which, which indicator you will choose for these titrations. So, with an example it is shown ok, it is a uh, it is an indicator it is a um, titration between the um, uh, strong acid HCl you have taken 50 milliliter of n by 10 HCl for example, and in a say in a uh, conical flask ok. And then you have taken in the burette you have taken um, NaOH solution uh, n by 10 NaOH solution then you have started your titration ok. Then uh, say for example, when you have added <coughs> um, NaOH um, 45 milliliter basically the neutralization point should come uh, when you will add 50 milliliter of NaOH because you have taken 50 milliliter of uh, HCl and the strength is same same ok. So, uh, but, uh, but we have started from uh, thinking about um, add, addition of 45 milliliter of NaOH. So, what will happen? What will be the pH? When you add 45 milliliter already added the NaOH solution, then pH will be like this. If you calculate it, uh, then also you will you can do it easily, ok. Then, uh, say for example, you have added already 49 milliliter of NaOH to this uh, HCl solution, then pH will be like this. Then you have added 49.5 milliliter then pH will be like this, you have added 49.9 milliliter pH will be like this, then 49.95 milliliter ok pH will be like this, then 50 milliliter. So, the it is neutralized totally neutralized, so it will be 7 pH 7 and then you have added some extra drops ok, then pH will be like this, then another drop then it will be like this ok. So, the we must uh, carefully observe here it is just before the neutralization point it is 4.3 and this is just after the neutralization point 50. So, it is a huge jump ok, okay, huge jump where to where 4.3 to 8.7 ok, just 2 drops uh, addition ok, it is it is changing so much that means, that means there is a huge jump ok, huge jump and this has been shown by this curve 1 a 1 b. So, this is 1 a this is 1 a and this is 1 b ok Th here to here huge jump. So, in this case where you are titrating a strong acid with a strong base then you can choose any indicator all indicator will fall in this range ok. It is a huge range right. So, you can you can choose any indicator. Okay, but in case of say 
um, this type of titration strong acid versus weak base. Okay. Then this is the curve 1 a 1 a versus 2 b 1 a and 2 b this is the curve. So, the range is here only here. Okay. So, you can choose some indicator where the pH range will fall in this range, okay. but if you if your titration is like this weak acid and strong base say for example, acetic acid and NaOH then 2 A 1 B curve that means, this this the pH change here you can see x axis and y, y axis in the x axis here it is 100, but here it is percent neutralized. Okay. This is percent neutralized of uh, acid and here percent neutralized of base here 100 percent neutralized. So, in case of this one weak acid and strong base 2 A 1 B. So, 2 A and 1 B. So, this is the range. Okay. This is the range that you have to think when you select the indicator, but this titration is not very good titration weak acid and weak base you can see that there is the, this is the curve 2 A 2 B means it will be like this it will be like this. So, here the range is very very narrow range. So, almost no indicator will fit uh, for this type of titration. Okay. So, for a given titration the indicator should be selected in such a way that its pH range, coins, range coincide with the sharp change of pH at the equivalence point. Okay. It, so, it is your job to choose there are so many options okay. depending on which titration you are doing you have to select the proper indicator otherwise you cannot do the titration. Okay. This is very important for indicator selection uh, you have to means you have to think a lot, okay. but ob obviously it is the acid base titration it is not other type of titration whatever I have discussed is acid base titration. Now, here one interesting slide I have uh, given to show you the color of phenolphthalein. this is the color of phenolphthalein. you know this is the NaOH okay, NaOH solution and phenolphthalein you have added. So, it is very dark pink color depending on the volume of that concentration of phenolphthalein, you may get uh, means uh, uh, either very dark color dark uh, pink color or light pink color. Okay. Here uh, uh, quite a few drops of phenolphthalein has been have been added that is why it is dark dark color. Now, you are adding ammonium chloride say for example, from outside here. So, what we will see? It is a salt. You may think that okay, so it will remain the same. But ammonium chloride, I have told you that it is a salt of weak base and strong acid. That means ammonium hydroxide and HCl. It is a salt of weak base and strong acid. That means it will behave like an acid. Okay. So when you are adding, you can see that slowly, slowly the the uh, it is being neutralized it is being retired ultimately you see the color is becoming means phenolphthalein is becoming colorless that means it is showing the uh, towards neutralization okay and then finally you see that uh, finally that final solution i have not shown but uh, it will be colorless obviously that is that is because of the hydrolysis okay ammonium chloride when it is hydrolyzed then it will produce what ammonium hydroxide and HCl, HCl is stronger that is why ultimately it will be neutralizing the solution. Okay. This is a very interesting uh, interesting uh, experiment that you can also do. Okay. Thank you so much.